I really desire that must change. So let me let me tell you what. So I hate travel. Okay, I hate driving. I hate to be on the road. But even I hate on the to be on the road. I would still go maybe one hour or two hours to someone to have my bus run. This is how much I care about having changes, being more aware, being more conscious. And then there, and then I have some other friends that are willing to do that as well. So what if you, you see, so you are probably someone like this as well. What if we all start asking for more crazy people like you to show up? I love that. I think we, we, I need. We want a I crazy think, premise. Yes, absolutely. I, you know, and I think that's how it all like sort of started because I was like, so, uh, you know, uh, before my bars, I, I would love to tell this story. Um, I actually went for my bars class because I was bored. I had nothing to do. I was sick of cleaning my house and taking care of my children. I had two small babies and I was so bored and I was like, oh, I want to do something else and I want to do something fun. But because now I know because I'm a humanoid, I can't just spend my whole day sitting in a cafe or I can't just spend my whole day walking on the streets. I decided to do a workshop and you know, this popped up on my Facebook and I didn't even know what it was. I just said, okay, I'm just going. I wonder what I had asked for prior to that, that this showed up and I went and I was so excited with everything that the facilitator was saying. It was so exciting and I was like, great. Now, just up until that class, I had done at least, if not some 500 workshops on, this got to be something more in life. So all the new age workshops, all like Reiki, pranic healing, whatever, all the modalities under the sun I had done, right? But in each one of them, I felt like I had to do a PhD. I had to reach like the highest level before I can offer it to anyone. That was my problem. I had to be like perfect and I had to be like a genius in it. So uh, before I could offer it to anyone. And I love that about the bars because they were like, go out there and start practicing, you know, call heads and um, just hold anyone's head and start. And, and actually I was willing, I was willing to, the biggest gift for me in that class was I didn't have to be perfect. I didn't have to be a genius. And I was willing to actually ask for more crazy people like me to show up who knew that there was something more out there. And even though at that time I didn't have these many words, like I didn't know that it was asking for people who believed that there was something more out there. It is crazy how people found me. It's crazy, just like how I found the class. So please ask a question, guys. Don't assume that just because no one lives a kilometer away or you live in a city where there are no bars practitioners yet, don't assume that that cannot change if you just ask a question. So what question Make did you ask, Ryan? <laughs> no, I said, make them move to your town. Absolutely. <laughs> now, I, I'm serious when I, when I talk about this. So, um, eight, nine years ago, so I was, uh, so I'm from a place called Penang. Oh, wait, I think we, we need to mute someone. You need uh, to mute someone, someone. Yeah, I'm just doing that. Um, we, can we, okay, good. I, I think they, thank you for muting yourself if you're not asking a question. Please, it'll just be make the recording okay. more clear. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, so uh, I, I have done a few bus class. I facilitated a few bus class in Penang. So I have a few friends. I, I started with friends. So those that learn from me, they are my friends. And then after that, I moved to Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. And so it's a brand new place for me. I know nobody there. And then I really hope that I can have someone that uh, would swap bus with me like, regularly. So I remember I asked that question. So. Asking, see, ask and you shall receive. This is the truth. Uh, this is how we create. Yeah. I asked that, but I actually didn't remember that I asked that. And then not long after that, one of my bus class participants from Penang, uh, so he has to, so he moved to KL, he moved to Kuala Lumpur for his study. And he so happened that he just stayed uh, like about 30 minutes from my place. So I was wow. like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so I have someone that swapped with me like uh, once a week. And then, and then after that, uh, so after a while, then he moved away to another place. After he moved away, I have someone else move, come to me and do swap. So I always have someone, at least someone that I can do swap with once a week. 
And then it, it, and I didn't realize that immediately. It was after a few months. And then one day suddenly you realize, oh, that's exactly what I asked for. Absolutely. So then I start, I start to ask for more. And then see, you, even though you are in a place that no one knows about us, you could be the, you can be the hub. You can like be the, the, the spotlight. So you, you bring more people to you or you can start spreading it. Wait, I think someone's still bringing the noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can you kill that person? <laughs> <laughs> That's the other so, thing I love about access. Don't like it, just kill it. <laughs> oh wait, disclaimer. I don't mean literally kill it. You you know, I mean you've got to ask a question if killing the person is gonna create greater for you. Okay, just don't go out there shooting people, guys. I did not endorse this. <laughs> Pardon <laughs> Pok. <laughs> yes, Arjun, yes. thank you. Pardon Pok. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so no matter in where you are right now, uh, if you ask questions, but of course, sometimes you need to be a bit patient. Universe needs to make some arrangement for one of your crazy friends to move somewhere near you. <laughs> so sometimes it takes time. <laughs> so what do you do? So my question is, what do you do when you ask that question and you have to be patient, right? So what is that that you're being between your ask and someone showing up that if you share if you share it today in this platform would like create greater for everyone here because i think people tend to get a little impatient or they tend to go like oh this is not working i ask but there is no one and uh, that sort of prolongs the process so ryan would you like to talk a little bit about that uh, so um how should i answer this <laughs> this you are not the only person living on earth <laughs> no, news flash. News flash. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, universe, universe is quite busy. Okay, look at it this way. It it it, it is fulfilling everyone's ask, everyone needs. So when you ask, and then so universe will not just deliver something for you, and it's all for your benefit. So universe will find someone else that is also want some change, also love bars, and then like bring that person to you. Uh, wow. I hope that it can be faster, but sometimes you need to be a bit patient. Um, so, but then it is my strong desire that really create that. So a lot of people, they will ask, but they, they don't really mean it. They just ask with their mouth. Yeah. They are like, oh, I hope someone can run my bus. So it's, that is not an ask, okay? That is a wish, that is a dream, that is a hope. That is not an ask. Okay. Can but we destroy I, and untreat all our hopes and dreams uh, at this point? I think that would yes. be fun. Everywhere that you misidentify and misapply your hopes and dreams and wish as ask. <laughs> Can we please destroy it? <laughs> yes, please. Oh. Right, wrong, right, wrong, good and bad, part and part. Oh, nice. That's why it's everyone. Cool. Awesome. So, of, of course, when I, when I say ask, I didn't think about that every day, like, connectively. But it was my energy, like, I need someone to run my bus. Where can I... Where can I have someone? Yeah. And then they start showing up. That's so cool. I think, uh, you know, uh, so I, with this ask and receive, I was also playing with it. And, you know, I just realized that when it's a true ask, like you said, I really desire it. Usually we ask and then we get busy with like doing things that we like and, you know, go about our day without, like you said, not having to ask it over and over, like in an obsessive manner, as if it's not coming, it's not coming. Why isn't it here yet? So you just ask knowing that it will come and then you go about doing your stuff. You keep that fire alive, uh, you know, like um, in the when I when I started offering bars to people, I found that I was running it for everyone, but I didn't really have someone running the bars for me. And uh, because I came from that belief that it's better to give than to get. So every one of you that has that. Can we please destroy and uncreate it all? Everywhere you're more willing to give than to receive. Can we please destroy and uncreate all of that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shots, boys and beyonds. And then I was like, hey, I know my bars are running when I run someone's bars, but I used to see those people, their faces when they would get up after the bar session and it would be like, they would be blissed out, they would be laughing, or they'd be like, oh my God, that was the best rest. And I'd be like, shoot, why am I being an idiot here? Why am I not getting that, right? And I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask for that. So it was so interesting that as soon as I asked for that, all these swaps started showing up in the city. And like you, I was willing to travel an hour away 
to just have my bars run. But I realized that just getting my bars run once a week would create such so much space and a level of uh, ease in my world that it was it was easier to go one hour and get my bars run than not. I don't know if that makes mm -hmm. sense, but you know, I was willing to drive yes. one hour to yeah. get my bars run. Because the, the wonk would set in so much later. Like, otherwise I'd be so wonky every few days and you know, get your bars run, you're kind of sorted for a couple of days or a couple of weeks. And you know, I was like, oh, I'd rather have that, you know, that ease. So everywhere you're not willing to have ease, can we please destroy and create that? <laughs> right, wrong, good and bad, pug and pot, all nice, just boys and beyonds. Awesome. Everywhere that ease is not, is not real, ease is not valuable to you, your heart life is more real to you. Will you please describe credit off? Yes, please. Right, wrong, good and bad, pug and pot, all nice, just boys and beyonds. And I think, <laughs> I think people kind of misapply and misidentify ease for easy. <clears throat> Driving an hour may not be easy, but the ease it created mm -hmm. was was something that I I was happy to have. So ease is not easy. And you know, recently I was facilitating a foundation class, and it the penny just dropped. Like Gary says, you gets it when you gets it. I just got like, mm -hmm. oh, ease is a choice. Easy is a judgment. <clears throat> Everything that brought up can we please destroy and uncreate it. Right, yes. wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shots, boys, and the others. Okay, so, so I think we, we, can, we can explain a little bit more about the easy is a judgment. Yes, please. I don't, I don't think most people understand this. Please, please, Ryan, I'd love, for, I'd, I'd love to know more about it too. I thought you were going to explain that. I oh, I thought, oh, I thought I was going to, oh, so easy is not easy. <laughs> came okay, back I, to I me. Did, I, can, I, can, <clears throat> I, can, I can answer it in this way, okay? So, how many things you, because of you say, it is not easy, and then you just completely avoid it. Yeah, so, a lot. You judge it as not easy, and then you just avoid it. But you never ask the question, how can this be easy? How can I have ease with this? Yeah. So, let's say I, I need to drive uh, one hour to, to meet someone. Uh, I don't like it, but I can ask, okay, what will it take for the journey to be filled feel, feel with ease? Yes. Ah. Okay, and uh, what we take maybe for this journey to be fun. So maybe along the way, I could be listening to a class. So, you know, when you listen to an SS class, like time flies, like suddenly you're like, oh, I'm already Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's, there's always something else that you can do to ch change it, to make it more fun, easier for you. But if you just say it's not easy, you shut all the doors of possibilities. Also, I think uh, sometimes when we are asking for easy and not ease, uh, we become a little uh, less, I, I don't know if motivated is the right word, but we become a little less uh, invested in it if it, it doesn't match our um, definition of easy, right? Like mm -hmm. you said, if it's easy, we tend to dismiss it. We tend, if it's not easy, we'll be like, okay, I'm not doing it, right? We don't even bother asking a question. So it's like, it's like a no show, right? Like you just don't do it. So you just become complacent and you become like, mm -hmm. oh, it's not easy. I'm not doing it. I, and, I, and this is so cool because so many people really, um, uh, because of this misidentification and misapplication, they turn away from so much that would create so much greater for them if they would just ask a few questions and face it head on, right? Like maybe there's a conversation that you need to have and it's not happening. And you've already decided it's not gonna be easy because you know maybe that person is rude or is someone who doesn't listen to you or you know in relationships and you'd rather avoid it how many of you have avoided those kind of commu communication or confrontation has it really been ease or has it created more of a funk and more of a density and you keep waiting for the axe to fall you keep waiting when will that person start screaming at me you know and the more you avoid it doesn't it get like more and more difficult to actually face that issue or you know talk about it but what if we mm -hmm. didn't go for the easy and ask like, okay, what would create ease here? And there are so many questions that Access gives us. Like, what would it take for this to be ease? What would it take for this person to receive me? What would it take for me to receive this person? 
um, barriers down, so many tools, like so many tools, right? And what if, or even a question like, what would it take for this person to ask me for a bar session? Right? Like, how does it get any better than this? But when we avoid the person, we avoid the conversation, it, like, does it really create more? So what questions can you ask to turn what is not easy into something Is fun? joy and glory and fun. Yes. To fill it with is joy and glory. So everything that doesn't allow that, times a godzillion, we will now destroy and create it, please. Yes. Right, wrong, good and bad, talk and pout, all nine shots, boys and beyonds. Awesome. And I, I, find, I find that the easy and not easy, both sides can kill you, okay? So if you say it's not easy, you just don't want to do it. But if you think it's easy, sometimes you find it too boring. You're like, ah, that's too easy. I don't want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I do when you are stuck. <laughs> oh yeah, I I, for, I, I just I for a minute forgot that humanoids have a problem with having it too easy too. <laughs> so everything yeah, that is can be it's not, yeah. not available. So everything that is can we please destroy and uncreate it? Right, right wrong. Bad part and part on my short and beyonds. Yes. But we love our trauma. But we love our trauma and drama. No, we love it when it's a little tough because then we can tell people, look, I drove an hour every day to get my bars run. That's so cool. It's a cooler story than, you know, I always had people around me and every day I could just swap my bars, right? So everything that is, can we please destroy and create it all, please? Right, wrong, good and bad part and part on my short boys and beyonds. Yeah. I, I have a different thought here. So let's say you don't have that much time and um, going to someone maybe is really not fun for you. You have another option. Be so rich, pay someone to come and run your bars. I love that. I love that. And if anyone here wants to pay or you know, send me a flight ticket, I'm up for it, really. Okay. I'm just telling so, I'm, I just thought I might as well give, give the offer now that you said, like, get rich, okay. get rich, hire Ryan and me to run your bars. I'm very expensive, by the way. Um, so am I. So just get really, really rich. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, you, if you pay me well, I do anything. <laughs> oh my God. I'm getting there. I'm getting well, there, Ryan. <laughs> no, 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 no. Almost everything. Okay. Not exactly. I, we can have a separate conversation on what you're not willing to do, no matter how much people pay you. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the second call. <laughs> <laughs> Follow up. <laughs> okay. What Love is it that. that you will not do, no matter how much you get, you get paid? That's the second call. <laughs> I like that. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll definitely do this one, guys. That's our beat. Okay. I, I, I want to add something very important here. If you are willing to pay someone to run your bus, it's you value bus. You know that this is something that you, you would pay money for. And when you be this energy, it's easier for other people to pay you to run their bus. Yes. If you yourself are not willing to pay for a bus session, so maybe you still have some judgments like, nah, it's not that too valuable. Then other people, your clients, your possible clients, they are going to pick that up from you and they will not pay you. I so everywhere that, that you are not really to pay for bus session <laughs> you hope people to pay you for bus session but you're not willing to pay anyone for bus session yes you double standard we... <laughs> <laughs> will, you, will you please this and credit off yes please right wrong good and bad pun and pun all nice first voice and yes oh that was such a cool one i think we can run this one more time so everywhere you want people to pay you for the bar session but you're not willing to pay anyone else for a bar session would you be willing to destroy and uncreate at all times a godzillion, please? Right, wrong, good, bad, 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 Right, wrong, good, bad, 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 Which is so cool, right? Because I think it's like what you put out there is what kind of comes back to you. So it's like, just like when you give a bars, you get a bars, like even if, even if you're not swapping at that time. So it's like the energy with which you pay money is exactly the energy with which others will pay money to you. So if you're like happy, and joyous to pay someone for a service or for a you know, utility or a product, everyone okay. else who pays you the, comes with that energy too, right? Uh -huh. <coughs> uh, we have a question in the, in the chat. Uh, awesome. Let me read so, that. Yeah, yeah. Can we pay someone to ask them to join class? 
<laughs> that is such a brilliant question. Wait, would it be like that you just gift it to them? Yeah, it's like you, you pay for someone else to join the class, so it's like you give someone the class. Is that the question? Whether you are facilitating... Can we pay someone to oh. ask them to join class? Well, if they will take the bait, why not? But like, I'm, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, say what I feel and then I'm going to pass the mic to Ryan because I'd love to hear his thoughts about this. So, um, you've got to ask a question if gifting them that bars class will create greater because if they really don't want it and they don't want anything to change their life, then giving someone what they're not willing to receive usually backfires. So, um, you know, but if they are really willing and it's because of money that they're not being able to join, like, I mean, yeah, for sure, like gift it to them. But you just have to ask a question that would, is this person really willing to receive this? Because when you give something to someone, when they're not willing to receive it, they usually have to come at you with daggers attached, it backfires. Of course, they don't use it, but they also make you wrong for pushing it on them. Right? <clears throat> so, Ryan, you want to say something about this? Ask yourself, do you value free stuff? Yeah. Okay. When something comes to you for free, uh, or wait, maybe you only pay a little bit for it, it's so cheap, you don't value it. Okay. The cost and value of course there are two different things okay very valuable things that contribute to you can be totally free but most people will not look at it this way somehow the more expensive it is they think it is more valuable so number one if you give it to them they might not appreciate you they might do not get the value at all second number two if you give them a bus class send them to a bus class uh, hoping that they will learn it and then come and run bus for you, you are hallucinating, mostly. <laughs> okay, so this is similar to parents that bring children to a bus class. They are like, I hope that my children, my, my son or my daughter can run bus for me. Ha ha ha, that almost never happened. <laughs> I can vouch <laughs> for it. It can happen, but very, very rarely it happens. <clears throat> yeah, but I can you vouch have, for it. Yeah, okay. I, I've taken my daughter to all the classes and when she decided to like actually start giving bars, I had to pay her for it every session. Like she refused to give it to me for free. Uh -huh. I mean, she'd be like, okay, you know, and she'd be like, as long as the money go, you show me the money, I run you the bars. And she runs it for only 10 minutes. Like, she's like, well, your session's done. And I'm like, okay, that's a lot of money I paid for 10 minutes, but okay. <laughs> How old is she? She's, she's nine and a half. Okay. Uh, well, uh, for me, I would, I would say that is quite normal because kids, they are faster. I know. So, their yeah, energy is faster, they don't need that long and they also yeah. don't have that much patience. Uh, but I found one way that can manipulate them. Okay. Please share. Uh, you, you, it's like, like how many dollars per minute or maybe one dollar per minute. Oh, I'll, a, try that. A fixed price? oh I'll try that. I'll try that. If you give them if you give them a fixed price, they will do five minutes like, yeah, it's done. Okay. <laughs> I love that. I'm gonna try that next. But you know, I love what you said about uh giving someone something for free and then you know them not really appreciating it because we don't we also don't value, I mean I know I don't value things that I get for free. Me too. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> uh however, um like I said, like, I mean, of course, uh, you know, if someone is eager and you want to gift it to them, great. Uh, but like, really, uh, unless they want to change their life. Uh, like, Ryan, what else can you like? It, so this is a great question. Like, instead of gifting them the class, what invitation can we be for them to like choose the class themselves? And what invitation can, uh, you know, if, if, if I want, if I want people to choose the bars or choose access classes what invitation can we be and how do you be that invitation could you talk a little about that okay um so i, I, will, I will still answer a little bit about the previous question um instead of hoping a specific person to learn bars 
you, what about having more ease? Just ask for someone else that would love bars to go and learn bars and have a swap with that person. Okay, so that you wouldn't be feeling upset, you wouldn't be judging that person. Ask, just ask for someone else. So, you see, if that person is not going to love it, even though they learn it, they might swap with you. I think max, maximum maybe twice in two years. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. don't hope anyone would run your bus. I have seen a lot of people that uh, they learn it and then they just put it aside. Uh, so, what also, invitation can we be? Yeah. Also, uh, yeah, if I can ahead. just add one thing, uh, isn't it like um, when we run bars with different people, different point of views that are similar to them go away. So like, yes. how lovely would it be if we had like more than one person to swap with, if we had like different people to swap with whenever we can. Uh, also, this is like the first step to opening, to receiving from people that you didn't expect to receive from or the kind of person that mm -hmm. you didn't you know expect to receive from right i mean uh, swaps really opened up a lot for me because being indian and being a woman and being a married woman i think it, uh, it's been a while that i just allowed myself to just go and lie down in front of someone and allow them to touch my head and run my bars i mean you know uh, I mean, that, and I'm sure like that would be similar to, to women like in Southeast Asia as well. Like we are so, um, we're such homebodies and we've been trained not to be touched when we grow up. That was, it was phenomenal. And, you know, initially uh, I, I realized that I was okay with women running my bars, but I had a lot of hesitation if I had to swap with a man. And then slowly and steadily, as I popped in for that point of view, um, even that started opening can you mute, up. Mute someone, please. Can you mute someone? Guys, if you've come on, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Right, and as and as that as that also uh, sort of shifted, I noticed that I began to receive from men in so many other areas of my life as well. I had more people, more bo more men coming for uh, classes. And, uh, and the nicest thing that happened was that my son became open to receiving access and he's a teenager. So that just made my life a lot simpler, which was, which was good. Okay. Can you mute that person, please? Yeah, I'm trying to see who it is. I th They're really scared of you, Ryan. Every time you say something, it just goes silent. See, I, I can hear like... <laughs> Yeah, what is that? So, but I don't have anyone. Well, I think maybe someone like. Oh, I got it! I got it! I got it! Yeah. I got it! Yeah, we should be good. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <happy> world, yeah. <laughs> See, if, if if you if you didn't have your bus run inside your mind, it's like that. <laughs> it makes you go crazy. Sorry. That's the greatest if, if reason to swap. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so speaking of uh, receiving bars from someone, I find that if you uh, really have resistance to receive from someone, uh, you have a lot of judgments there. If you are willing to like, open yourself up to receive bars from that person, sometimes that gives you the most change. Um, I have some participants that they just like to swap with each other. So it's like, it's always you and me, you and me, you and me, you and me. Yeah. So they, they are not open to receive from other people. And as you said just now, whenever you, when you run someone bus, whatever that they are releasing, you, if you have something similar, yours get released as well. Yes. Okay. So if you really don't want to run someone bus, what are you refusing to let go? Wow. I love that. Everything that is can be please destroy and uncreate it all, guys. Right, wrong, good, bad, bad, book, all nine shots, boys and beyonds. Um, I, I would like to share a clearing process that helped me a lot um, many years ago. It's something like this, if I remember. Uh, like, what energy space... No, I, I'm making it up now, so I can't totally remember. What energy space, consciousness and choice can your body and you be? to run bars for as many people as possible and to receive bars from as many people as possible with total ease. 
and everything that doesn't allow that times a gazillion will now be trying to read it Yes, off. please. Right, wrong, good, bad, right, wrong, good, bad, 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 so Ryan, we have a couple of questions and I'm glad they're coming in. So I'd like to take, uh, I'd like to take that. Yes. So there's one that's really pinging. Uh, I'm going to take uh, Purti Soraya's question, which is, I don't know why when I gave bars to someone for free, it seems to work amazingly. But when, uh, when, other pay, when I give a paid session, they don't respond back and I feel that they don't feel at work. So what is happening with that according to us? Ooh, I love this question. Go ahead, Ryan. I can see that face is like dying to talk about it. <laughs> uh, my, my answer for you is forget about them. <laughs> okay. Those people are not willing. They, they, they don't truly want change. They just want something free. Please acknowledge this. A lot of people, they just want something free. They just want to take from, from you. So if you give a free session and then they will come and take, and then when you start charging and they are not coming back, you know that they don't value the change. They don't want change. They rather save the money and have their suffering. So uh, leave them alone. I also have another, uh, another side to this. Uh, is also yeah, I, I'm, I'm the mean one, so you can be the no, good one. <laughs> no, I, lo I love that. But no, I'm going to be mean now. It's like, uh, for me, it's like, uh, uh, when I started giving paid sessions in the beginning, I was very vested in the results. So it was to be like, I hope they receive change. I hope they change a lot. I hope I can heal them or fix them, you know. And uh, what would happen is if they didn't respond to me or they didn't share with me what changed or they didn't come back, it was very easy for me to go into my own wrongness and say, oh, this doesn't, it didn't work or I didn't do it well. So, you know, uh, you may want to look at that. Like, um, how invested are you that they should receive change instead of just asking to be the contribution you can be for that session. One of the one two questions that I mean two two clearings that I do before I give every session is what energy, space, consciousness, and choice can I be to be a contribution to them and their bodies just before the session? And everything that doesn't allow that I destroy and I'm creative. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pork, all nine shots, boys and beyonds. And the second question I always, always ask is, because, you know, I have that giving problem. So um, I always say, what would it take for me to give them exactly what they can receive and not a single drop more? And everything that doesn't allow that I destroy and I'm creative. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pork, all nine shots, boys and beyonds. We want to change their whole lives in one go. And that might be too much for them. Like I had, I, in my early, earlier, my problem was they wouldn't want to come back to me because it was too much change and they couldn't deal with it. You know, it was like I scared them off. You know, because obviously I, I received so much from bars that I was like, oh, I want to give them everything. I want to change their entire life. They should just get it all now, right? So everything that is and everywhere, any of you do that. I don't think any of you do that, only me. Can we please destroy and create that? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, right, nine shots. Power, nice. Yes. I love your clearings. Yes. Thank you. But I'm sure you have something to add to that bit of, you know, when we're uh, very invested. Really. <laughs> when we're very uh, invested. Um, I think we all started with that. Especially when you just learn it. You're like, oh, yes, this can change your life. Um, so this is what happened with me. Okay, so the first year that I learned SS Pass, in that one year, I run bus for bus session for people like over 100 sessions. I was like, yes, bus, do you want to try? Do you want to try? I've done that a lot. Yeah. But then the second year is like, it, I didn't run that much bus for people. So what happened was that the first year when I run bus for so many people, and then I had some disappointments, like when, when I see people uh, didn't change or when, when I start charging and then they are not coming back. So it always like hurt your feeling. You're like, ah, oh, hey, did I do something wrong? Uh, maybe I did something wrong so they are not coming back. So I went into self judgments and a lot of upset, disappointment. And then of course, that is going to affect me the next year. So the, the second year I didn't run as much bus. And then of course I made myself even more wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like wrongness on top of wrongness on top of wrongness uh, oh, but I think you're the only one who does that no I don't think anyone on this call ever does that I, I think so I don't think anyone can be as stupid as me I don't think so too but, <laughs> yeah, so 
<laughs> so then it took me a while to got over that and pop and pot all that and then finally start asking questions again like so what would it take for me to run bus for as many people as possible um, and then people start coming back um, so the oh, question that you so you, you asked a question you mean instead of like staying in your wrongness and smelling the poo you actually used it you know sometimes sometimes i got a little bit smarter you know <laughs> after being stupid for so long so so long and then it's like ah oh, okay i can't ask a question yeah so uh and another question that i asked that i find it help uh, very helpful for me is uh, i i when i wake up i just ask like okay who can i contribute to for today wow wow that's beautiful yeah. okay uh I can't remember where I learned this, so I'm not the originator of this, but I read it somewhere. And then, uh, see, especially when you feel like you are so stuck, you, you need client, okay, you, because, you, because they pay you money, you need their money. When you function from that neediness, you want to take from them, of course, they will run away. They don't want to come to you for you to take from them. Yep. Uh, so it's, it's like a vicious cycle. The more you don't have, the more you want to take. Then finally, I, in that, I was like, okay, who can I contribute to today? How many people can I contribute? Wow. It changed the whole energy. So even though they have never learned access, they actually have awareness. Yeah. So they were sense like, ah, this person can contribute to me. Of course, I will come. Yeah. yeah. So how many people can you contribute to that awesome. you didn't acknowledge that you never thought you could because you yourself still full of problems. You're not perfect yet. <laughs> Everything there is times a godzilla. We will now just run crazy, please. Yes, please. Right, Ryan, right, right. Back from them, all nine right, shots, points, and beyond. Also, it's so cool, right, Ryan, when you said, if I wake up in the morning and I ask, who can I contribute to? There is someone else who's asking, who can I contribute to? And that just makes me in the game. And I might just see someone who can contribute to me because it's such a gifting and receiving universe, right? And it's not necessary that the contribution comes in the form of cash always, right? Yes. That is like, yeah. So I think uh, that is so freaking cool. I do have, we do have another very interesting question and let's see if we want, if, uh, if we can um, yes. give with them some more questions on these questions. So the question is sometimes I, so Helen Tan is asking, sometimes I find it a bit hard to explain what is the bars to someone. How can we explain the bars with ease so that they can get what the bars is? Um, I'm going to give that to Ryan and I want to just tell Namrita that Namrita, I'm not ignoring you. I'm going to get to your question. I promise after this. She just posted it a lot earlier, but I was just following the energy. So, cool. So, Ryan, yeah. So, how do you explain to someone uh, what the virus is? And, and also, I, I have another question to add to that. Like, do we really always have to, like, technically explain to them what the virus is? Is there some interesting way of sharing this information? Uh, don't try to give them like the technical part of it. Don't try to explain it in a way like it makes you more conscious. It makes you more aware. Nobody understand that. Okay, <laughs> they want their money problem solved. They want better sleep. They want to be like no 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 longer feeling sad. So if you use language that normal people can understand, even the stupid and idiot can understand. We use those simple words like for example. Uh, I was so sad and then I received this bar session that I don't understand and then, oh, now I'm happy. Or oh, money start coming. And then people are like, yeah, 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 I want that. I don't know what that is, but I want that. Yeah. More people want to have sex with them. me. That should get them to run the bars. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I wouldn't tell them the technical part of it. Uh, if they are really interested to know, they can go to the official website um, to find out more or when they attend a bus class themselves, they will know more about that. But you giving them too much information at first is a way of pushing them away. You, 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 you say that blah, 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 blah. They ask you one simple question. What is bus? And then you talk for 30 minutes, blah, 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 blah. And then, so they disappear. Yeah, that, uh, that, that, so that is so normally, cool. So tell me something. So supposing I called you up and I said, hey, uh, Ryan, I want a session, but I don't understand what you do. And then would you ask me a question before telling me like something about the bars? Or would you just go and say, oh, you know what? It just like no, helps your money flows. Or what would you do? If I, maybe we if can I do a little role play you, here. 
Okay, okay, okay. So let's say you call me and then if I immediately start telling you, oh, there's this thing called bus, it's so good, it can help you. You'll say, you lose your client. <laughs> the, the, you, because the client feel like you haven't even known what's my problem and then you start selling me something. Right. Okay. Right. Oh my God, Ryan, that's you, such, a, such a cool point. Can you please, can you please say this again? It's like, so, it's, it's, a, it's an energy of like wanting to push that on the person, right? Yes. Even it's though like we're, in, even though it. unknowingly, because we're just excited to share it, you know? Yeah. So, but the, the energy, when you do that, the energy is like, I want to take from you. Finally, I have a client. <laughs> <Okay>. so, <laughs> uh, of course, you, you ask them, I will ask some questions like, okay, what's up? What's going on? Uh, tell me more. Then if you tell me some of your problems, like, oh, you have this problem, that problem, blah, blah, blah. Then maybe I tell you, oh, I have this thing called access bus that maybe you can try. So it's, you see, I won't force you to choose it, but it's like, hey, if you want, you pick. You are a humanoid, okay? When someone forces you to do something or they have a point of view, a strong point of view, you should do it, you will fight against. Absolutely. Please say that again. I think, I think it's very valuable, this point that you made that we are humanoids. So when someone has a strong point or they strongly suggest something to us, our first reaction is to yeah. not do it. Okay, guys, yeah, that's a like big example, tip. You, yeah, that's a big you know, tip. Like, <laughs> like maybe your friend just watch a movie and then come tell you, you must watch that movie. It's so damn good. You're like, no, not interested. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. So, so it's so not it's just not about just the about, bars. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, you see, I, you might have very kind heart, you want to help someone. I totally get that. I love to help as many people as possible. But help is not the most correct word. It's, it should be empowering. But you see, if you just give too much information, people run away, you lose them. And then you go into more wrongness. Okay. So once I got the client's information, the story, then I will tell them some example. Oh, I, have, I someone have just received bus and then they have this problem change. Uh, so maybe you want to try it. They feel no pressure and then it's more likely that they will choose it. And I love, I want to just point that out that when you were saying that, it was very inviting, the energy. It was very soft. It was very gentle. It was very, hey, maybe you want to try this. And it was almost like, I was like, I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe I will. Like, you know, do you know someone who can run my bars and, uh, and then like take it on from there. Right. But, but you're right. Like I've heard this a lot of time, but as you were speaking it, I totally got the energy. So thank you for that. Ryan. Thank you. Thank you too. Uh, so, and remember, don't promise them any result. <laughs> so it's always like it may change you want to give it a try yes. yeah okay no disclaimers if you promise them result they will come when they don't get the result it's your fault <laughs> <laughs> okay. absolutely so we have another so should, should we go on? i hope that helped uh, helen and uh, we do i want to take namrita's question before she starts getting really pissy with me um <laughs> so her question is what if Kids are not interested in running their bars and we know that after the bars, their crankiness will go, even though that's my interesting point of view. I have a very simple solution to this because I've done it with my children. I just run their bars when they're asleep or when they're so busy watching TV. It works like magic. And sometimes I do like a deal and deliver when they ask me for um, uh, like to watch extra TV. I'll be like, as long as I get to touch your head and they'll be like, yeah, sure. You know, like recently my son, I had taken away his phone because his exams are around and he spends so much time, interesting point of view on his phone. So I was like, hey, you know what? He's like, mom, I want to play a soccer game. I was like, only if you let me run your bars while you're playing the soccer game. And he was like, yeah, sure, go ahead, do whatever you want. And I actually got a full bar session while he was playing soccer on his phone. And that's become a deal and deliver. He gets the phone to play soccer and I get to run his bars. So, you know, just play with the kids like you know you, like ryan said you can always manipulate them just ask what you can say uh, that will get them to ask you for the bars manipulate them or bribe them <laughs> <laughs> bribe i use bribe <laughs> totally do whatever works 
We we also have someone who's raised their hand for a question. Wilma's raised her hand. So should I unmute her? Ryan, should we take this question? I think she can unmute herself. Yeah. Oh, can you? <laughs> Go ahead, Wilma. Oh, yes, Hi. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi, Wilma. Yeah. Hi. Thank you for this. This is like super expansive and uh, it's answered a lot of my questions. Ryan, thank you so much. Uh, I have one question. Just now you guys said that, you know, uh, we don't promise anything. And uh, I've uh, heard uh, calls with the Axis Dazzle also where they say don't uh, let's not promise anything. However, uh, like, you know, I was just planning to do uh, Facebook ads for my uh, bar sessions. Uh, and... Uh, I, I keep wondering what exactly do I put in my Facebook ads that could be an invitation, you know, because when you're speaking, there is a lot that you can speak. But when you're putting up a Facebook ad, there's very minimum that you can actually tell. And okay, it's my interesting point of view, but a lot of people, they, you know, have all these, you know, powerful uh, things that, you know, do this and you'll get so much and so much time and all of that. So what invitation can be put on a Facebook ad that can create more, uh, people wanting to run bars. Ryan and me are just looking at each other. <laughs> okay. No, you, you <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, this whole conversation about what do you tell people and you said, you're, you rightfully said that when we speak, we can speak a lot. But the whole idea is not to go by this reality. We don't want to speak a lot. We want to speak a little bit and be the invitation. So when you make a Facebook ad, there are also a lot of questions that you can ask. You can ask what would be really inviting. Uh, you know, I would ask like, which graphic would be an invitation? What words would be an invitation? How much do I need to just say that? What, what can I say that will be like an invitation? And the other thing I do is I also like uh, notice the kind of ads that attract me. The ones that make me go want to go click on the link and actually see what the class is about. And then I'll, even if I don't, don't logically understand that, you know, mm -hmm. I always ask to like, okay, what would it take for me to duplicate that energy? Because I know that it's inviting. So that's some of the questions that I would play with. And now I'm going to pass the mic back to Ryan. <laughs> and he can add, I'm sure um. he I have different way of uh, posting things on Facebook or social media. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, so let's say I have a class that I want to create. I look at the energy of that class and I will ask, mm -hmm. okay, uh, what does this class want to tell people? Okay, so every class has its own energy. Ooh. Ryan, we, you froze at like such an interesting point. Hold on, hold on. Let's unfreeze you. Okay, you're unfrozen. <laughs> You'll just have to say that again. Was I frozen or what? Yeah, or maybe my internet was unstable, but no, I'm sure you were saying something really, really important. Something I didn't want to hear. So I'm going to make you repeat it. <laughs> um, I get the energy of the class. So, so let's say I have few bus class upcoming. And then, mm -hmm. even though they are all bus classes, but they mm -hmm. individually have different energy. So yes. I will look at each and all of them separately and ask them like, okay, this class, how do you want me to present you to this world? Wow, yeah. Um, what, what is it that, like, what do you want to tell people? And then by asking that question, so if you, okay, all of you, let's try this together. If you have, if you are a bus facilitator, if you have an upcoming bus class, Get the energy of your bus class, and then mm -hmm. with no point of view, just ask, okay, bus class, okay, this class, uh, how can I present you to this world? What is it that you would like to contribute to people? Okay, notice that there are some energy coming, like some awareness just got downloaded. Um, so you got the energy, but sometimes you don't have words immediately to describe it. Don't worry. So you get the energy, that's the first part. And then, you, and then you start to find words to write those things. Uh, normally, I will keep it short. Nowadays, uh, there are, people are full of information. There are too many informations overloading them. So give them information in the most precise way uh, so that it's easy for people to see. And then when I write it, sometimes I will ask questions like, okay, if I write this, what does it create? Okay, this line, 
okay, do I change it or do I move it to the next paragraph? So it's like, let's say I wrote three short paragraphs, okay? Paragraph one, two, three. The first one I will ask, okay, what, do, what will this create? If I sense the energy of expansion, I know, okay, para first paragraph is good. Second paragraph. So I would, for me, see, I, I'm quite <laughs> control freak, so I would check line by line, kind of line by line. Um, so sometimes, even though I, I wrote something that I think is very good, but if I think it's very good, that is just my point of view. Uh, I will look at the energy like, okay, does this really create more? If I get a no, I will. Description. So that's how I would do it. Okay. Wow, that was so much information. Yeah, that was really, really good. I'm going to try that very soon. I'll let you know how it works uh, out. Thank you so much. I, I do this with graphic as well. Uh, I, uh -huh. I, would, I would see which graphic is an, uh, it can represent. So this is my question. Which graphic can represent the energy of this class? Um, sometimes it's a graphic that is totally irrelevant, <laughs> okay? Uh, so some, some graphic represent that energy. So I will use that one and then I start adding simple things like maybe the date, my picture. So keep it simple. My, I always keep it simple. Uh, Roini, you'll receive it in the recording because uh, the recording was going on. So it's too long for us to repeat, uh, but you'll get it. I'm sure like uh, it's there in the recording. Okay. You need to listen like five times. Yeah, maybe times. you need, if it, if it froze for you, then you need to listen to it at least five times. Excellent. So uh, we have another, oh, uh, Vilma, are you done with your question? Did yeah, that, yeah. Uh, Thank you so awesome. much. That, that was really good. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Ryan, you're a rock star. You're yes, you are. <laughs> I'm so glad. You know, how many of you would want Ryan to come to India and facilitate a class? I won. Me too. <laughs> we can have everybody, uh, you know, raise their hands. And I'd love for you. I'd love for you to come to India, and I'd love to host you here. It'd be such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll work something out now that the energy is out there. I do have one more question, which is: How many times do you need to run uh, bars for the kids to see changes? I'm going to give this to Ryan. <laughs> Why is it always me? <laughs> it's not always you. Um, you know, I can take this. Uh, uh, to be honest, uh, there's no definite answer. I sometimes see changes in just one session and sometimes I, you know, follow the energy and run it for two or three or four times, depending on uh, what the issue is. And uh, we think, you know, and this was a great learning for me. We think that just because they're in small bodies, uh, they're not aware. However, if you would ask them questions, they are aware. There, are, there is so much my kids have changed just because I asked them one question. Like if they were cranky and I just asked, hey, who does that belong to? And in a very fun way, it, it, I know that their face changes because something lightens up. And I'm like, see, not everything is yours. Like, you know, just we think that uh, we can't use the tools with the kids. But really, honestly, they're just uh, as aware, if not more. And uh, uh, there are fun ways of giving them these tools so that they can even use it even when you're not asking them the question, like Pock and Pod, for example, or, you know, things like cellular memory. Both my kids know that process. So um, if they get hurt, they'll just run that. And then, uh, I mean, there's so much like, you know, of course, there's who does it belong to. And then there is always what else is possible and how does it get any better than right so my my daughter has been in a bars class with I mean I mean she she when I became a bars facilitator she was three and I would take her to every class I attended or facilitated in fact she's read the foundation manual out for me in a class several times now one thing I learned from her I learned from her is no is not an answer like no like what is no like it's just a word there's always what else is possible it is so crazy you can say no to her and she'll be like hmm, what else is possible and she always gets what she asks for because she's like and what else is possible right so you teach that to your child and things open up in ways and so um, with the bars i really don't know how many sessions uh, uh, or you can ask how many sessions would this require and whatever number pops you can just run it for that many times and it can change 
every session, right? It's not always that number. Cool, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Anything else, Ryan? Like, I mean, is there any other way that you would, or any other question that people can ask when, no, even like you, when they're dealing- You say it too perfectly. I, <laughs> I can't say anything, you, you, have, you say it perfectly. <laughs> so, so when you get, I, I have a question on this though, like when you have yes. like clients asking you that, okay, you know, I'd like to change this. And you know, you've already given them this spiel of, I don't know what will change, but you know, and then you give them the tools, but some, so many of them always ask like, how many sessions would it take? What do you do with that then? Usually, I would just say, I don't know. I, I always honestly say, I don't know. It's up okay. to you. Uh, so give them some random answer. Not really random, but like, for example, some people change, have that change after three sessions. Some people take five sessions because everyone is different. So only you know. Pass it back to them. <laughs> Ooh, I love this. Only you know. Okay. <laughs> you know, for the longest time, though, honestly, can I be honest here and candid, even though I use it myself? Um, when I started attending bars class and it's become a joke between some of my friends and me, when the bars facilitator would ask me, what do you know for every question that I asked? Good God, I wanted to slap them because I was like, if I knew, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be asking you. But you know, today that question is so valuable because none of us are taught to trust ourselves. We always have someone else telling us what's good for us, what's right for us, how we should do something. And very early in our lives, we start giving up our awareness. And this question, no matter how irritating it may be, interesting point of view, is just like such a kick. Like, oh yeah, what do I know? Right? What do I know about this? That's so freaking cool. Like, Gary really knew something when he find all of this, right? Like, I mean, I owe him so many dollars, it's not funny. So, <laughs> for me, I would say, like, it's only you know, and then, like, maybe you can try with one session and see how it goes for you. If you don't like it, then fine, no problem. I, we do have another question, which is so cool because we also had it in our like little ad that we sent out with the call. This is my family who won't let me run their bar, so what can I do? Somehow they don't believe in it. Do you want me to answer? Uh, <laughs> well, I read out the question. <laughs> well, I, I have been trained by you that I need to answer right after you <laughs> read out the question. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, please take this. Leave them alone. That's always my <laughs> advice. Ooh, straight up. What just... is it? Okay. Let, let, let me ask you this. We have booty what? saying, what do you know? <laughs> what what's the point of trying to run someone bus when they don't want it? Oh, what's the point? What does that give you? Okay. Uh, of course you might think that they can change. Okay, let me put it this way. Uh Choice is the most important thing. If they don't choose to change, you run their bars, they will still be kind of the same. Uh, but if they choose to change and then even without bars, they will still change. Okay, maybe slower, but eventually they get it. So a lot of us, we try to fix our family. Uh, big mistake, okay. Forget about fixing your family. I, of course, I have tried that when I first started with uh, access and it didn't work uh, and then eventually it came to a point I have allowance of them of my parents for example not changing I'm like ah, yeah if you don't want to change that's fine and then after a few years more a uh, few years later I noticed that they start to change when I no longer hope that they change I don't force them to change I don't try to fix them they change so it can, it might take a, a while, maybe it could be even months or years. Uh, the less point of view you have uh, to give them the space and the freedom to choose to change or not, the more they can change. Yeah. So. Can I add something to that as well? I, yes, love, yes. I love that you said that the more freedom you give them and when you get over the point of view that they need to change, they generally change or I would have changed my perspective of them. Uh, However, you can always ask a question as long as it's from a space of no judgment and interesting point of view. Like, um, um, you know, you can always ask questions like, what would it take for them to get their bar strap? And then leave it, like have no, have no um, invested point of view in that. And the other thing that I love to play with also is like, 
I find that it's not that they're resistant to the bars per se, but when it's like, um, you know, they think it's some mumbo jumbo thing you're doing. So I don't give them the full information. I just go like, oh, it's kind of like acupressure. It's just like a great massage on your head. And, you know, um, you can play with that too. So, you know, you can always ask like, what can they hear? Sometimes it's not really that they are resistant to receiving the bar. Sometimes it's like just what they think it may be. Uh, you know, misinformation. So you can always ask like, um, what can I say here that will allow this person to receive the bars? One. Second, just play with the questions. You really never know. When you ask something like, what would it take for their bars to run? You have no timeline to it. It may not be this lifetime, another lifetime, as long as you don't have an invested point of view about it. Okay? That's true. Um, yeah. Okay, sometimes um, when, so, as I said, leave them alone, but of course you can ask the questions, what will it take for them to finally receive bars? Um, for a lot of people, when they have enough of their pain, finally they have had enough, they will come to you. Wow, okay. I, I love that, I love that, yeah. You're so right, because it had to get really painful for me to actually then start choosing ease as well in my life. So that is so cool. Like maybe it's not hurting them enough yet to change. That was so cool. Thank you. Like, yeah. So maybe we can ask like how much more painful can it get? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, guys, disclaimer, you don't have to ask that question unless it's fun for you. Unless it's fun for you. <laughs> cool. Okay, can, I, can I ask another question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, so I, I get that, you know, we are all humanoid and we wish to be a contribution. And uh, uh, so there is, this, uh, there, is, there, is, there is this energy that sometimes gets created after we get our own bars run that, you know, wow, this is so expansive and I wish to be a contribution and who, whose bars can I run and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, and at the other end of the spectrum, there are times when you're like so desperate. You're like, oh my God, I want money. Just come and get your bars run and, you know, just give me your money. So how do you deal with that? <laughs> you know, when you're like in that desperate energy and you're like, fuck the contribution. I just want money right now. So how not to get to that level? <laughs> how always to be in contribution? Wow. <laughs> I didn't read out the question this time. So <laughs> you can use the training as you will. <laughs> <laughs> so okay uh, well I don't know what this I didn't really get that question uh, uh. so actually Ryan did speak about it uh, right at the you know like uh, in the first half of this call that uh, when we come from that desperate energy of wanting to take someone's money we actually push mm -hmm. them away because someone who's coming yes. to receive bars from you they're coming to receive and when they get the energy of you're the one who's trying to take that's enough to push them away mm -hmm. so I think a good idea is to sit with yourself and fucking pod yourself to heaven and back till you're not feeling desperate and needy and actually start with this question of you know who can I contribute to and, and I like to play with like just another version of this question is who's looking for my contribution? And you can always, and you can always also add who's looking for my contribution and is willing to pay me for it. Pay me a lot for it. Pay me a lot for it. The word is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ask for those that can receive you to come to you yeah. and let go of the, the others. Yeah. How does it get any better than this and what else is possible, right? So you're still asking to be your contribution and you're, and you're also okay, to, you know, you're also happy to receive their money. Okay. Awesome. You know, we have, we, I, I can't believe we've talked the R, um, uh, Ryan, and we still have one more question. Do you want to take the last question and then maybe we can, uh, maybe we can do Up a part two. We can do a part two. Up to you. Right? I'm all yours. You decide. You are, you are woman, you decide. Okay. okay. I learned that. I love that. You, I'm totally falling for you right now. A, you said I'm all yours. Second, you said you're the woman, you decide. Oh my God, I'm done. I re we really need to do this call on, uh, you know. No, I'm all yours for this Zoom. Only during this Zoom. <laughs> 
so he just clarified that <laughs> cool so uh the let's take the last question and then we'll uh, you know we we can always have a part two if we have enough of you asking and uh, yes. of course um i've totally loved this co uh, conversation with ryan and i'm sure we're going to create more such conversations oh, i enjoyed future. this too much so here is uh, this question is is it a good idea to charge your family for a bars class if they choose it this one totally Ryan you're taking because Indians are always giving everything away from for free so I'm not gonna take this question <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all it's up to you uh, there is no right or wrong here uh, there are some family members that they are willing to pay you see if they are willing to pay you of course you receive it uh, but if you know that they are not going to pay you, uh, sometimes I wouldn't even ask for it because if you ask for it, what you get is judgment. Okay, you create more trouble for you in the family. Uh, that I would say that is not necessary. Uh, there are so many ways for you to get money from many other places um, for family. So I don't charge them. Uh, even th even though. We say that if you give it, give it for free, they will not value it. That's fine. See, I rather give it for free to them and they not receive it than having them judging me because I asked them to pay me. But that is how I would deal with this situation. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. And I guess um, you know you could always follow the energy of what that will create for you and for them. And uh, just ask a question like, if I give them this for free, what would that create? And if I don't, what would that create? Right? And of course, you, 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 you set the limit, like maybe maximum once a week. If you, you just tell me I'm very busy. Okay, when I have time, I will do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, she's also asking about the class. I, and you know, the same, you just follow the same rule for the class as well. Like if you're giving them a class and not a session, right? Mm, I didn't see that. Question, where, where, where did you mention class? Is it a good idea to charge your family for a bars class if they choose it? Uh, oh yeah, for a class, uh, I would say you have to charge. Uh, but yeah, that's for a session, yeah, you can do it for them. For class, they have to pay for it. Okay, cool. So they have to pay for class, guys. That's, that's, that's me, that's how I would do it, okay. Yeah. But they could also ask a question, no, Ryan? Like, what would it create if they gifted it? And what would it create if they don't? Like, if they charge them, like, would it create more? It's the same conversation as what, you know, uh, people don't value the free stuff. So, you know, play with it. Yeah, give it, give it a try. Yeah. You can make a mistake All once right. and then choose not to do it again, right? Or maybe do the mistake twice and then three times and then four times and then choose not to do it again. Yes. How does it get any better than this? Okay. Ryan, before anyone else says anything, thank you for playing with me. I have had the time of my life up until today. And I truly, truly wonder how does it get any better than this and what else is truly possible. And I wonder what our, where our next conversation is going to be, what it's going to be about. I'm really, really excited. And I'm sure if people have more questions about the bars, we can always do a part two. Yes. I look <laughs> forward to having another conversation with you. Awesome. It's so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for everyone who's online, uh, even those that don't really understand English, but have been here. I believe energy is our first, um, you know, language, and I'm sure you received everything that happened here. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And special shout out to all the translators. And I hope we didn't kill you, Winda. I hope we were slow enough. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for being here. Uh, this wouldn't have been possible without you. So we are very, very grateful. That was my little Grammy speech. I've been waiting to say that. <laughs> thank, so, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So go and change the world. Thank you. Thank you. Go and change the world one hit at a time. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, can I, can I just Thank you. can I just say one more thing before you guys go off? Like, if you want the recording of this, could you just put your emails onto the FB event page and we will send it out to you? Okay, or I'll just put the link there and everyone can just get it from there. All right. Thank okay. you, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Ryan. Good night. 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 Good night.